Hello and welcome to another Science 9 Crash Course. In this episode, we're going to talk all about pollution and toxicity. Because Earth's population is rising so quickly, we need to make sure we take care of our natural resources. In some parts of the world, pollution is very evident. But in other places, it might not be so obvious. Now, when we're talking about pollution, we're talking about any alteration to the environment producing a condition that is harmful to living things. Pollution can be caused by a pollutant, which is any material or form of energy that will cause harm to a living organism. We have already learned about an example of this in DDT. So how do we know if we have too much of something that causes pollution? To be able to determine this, we need to be able to calculate the concentration of a substance. Typically, we calculate concentration by determining the percent that that substance makes up. For example, if you're drinking milk that is 3.5% milk fat, then in 100 grams of that milk, you'll have 3.5 grams of milk fat. Or if you had 1,000 grams of milk, that would equal 35 grams of milk fat. Percent is just another way of saying parts per 100. We can also calculate smaller concentrations in something called parts per million or PPM. An easy way to determine parts per million is to calculate how many milligrams per kilogram there are, since a milligram is one millionth of a kilogram. And we can even calculate really small concentrations in parts per billion or PPB. To give you an example of how small one part per billion is, it would be the same as one second in 32 years. Now that we know how to calculate different concentrations of a substance, let's use this information to talk about toxicity. Toxicity is the ability of a chemical to harm an organism. Some chemicals are more toxic than others. In fact, if the symptoms occur immediately after one exposure, we call that acute toxicity. And if the symptoms occur only after the chemical has accumulated to a specific level after many exposures over time, we call that chronic toxicity. Whether a substance has acute or chronic toxicity, the amount of the chemical is always important. Because of this, the government has set strict guidelines for things such as heavy metals and the amounts that are allowed in fresh water supplies. For example, lead is only allowed at a maximum permitted level of 7 parts per billion, while mercury is only 0.1 parts per billion. It is also very difficult to calculate at which level you will be affected by a chemical because everybody has a different body mass and a different lifestyle, so everybody will react differently. But a common way to measure the toxicity of the substance is called lethal dose 50 or LD50. LD50 is the dose or amount of a chemical that will kill 50% of the population to which it is applied. For example, if I had 100 mice and I gave them a dose of a chemical and 50 of them died, that would be the LD50 for that chemical. LD50 is commonly measured in milligrams of the substance per kilogram of body mass. LD50 is a great way of measuring toxicity because it takes into consideration that all people are different and have different masses. Here are some examples of substances in their LD50s. Aspirin has an LD50 of 1700 milligrams per kilogram. Caffeine, the chemical found in coffee and many soft drinks, has an LD50 of 200 milligrams per kilogram. Nicotine, which is found in cigarettes and vaporizers, has an LD50 of 50 milligrams per kilogram. And one of the most deadly chemicals known to humans is botulinus toxin, which has an LD50 of 0 .00001 milligrams per kilogram. As you have noticed, as the LD50 amount gets smaller, the toxicity of the chemical increases. So the smaller the number, the more toxic it is. Let's take a trip back now in time and talk about a dark part of Canada's history in medicine. Thalidomide was a drug given to pregnant women who suffered from morning sickness. It was sold from 1957 to 1961 in almost 50 countries around the world, including Canada. The thalidomide didn't harm the pregnant women, however, the children that were born had severe deformities, especially to their limbs and extremities. It was eventually banned worldwide, however, the damage had already been done. Thalidomide was a heinous drug, however, it is still being used today to treat many diseases such as HIV and cancer. Which brings us to the idea of acceptable risk. 
An acceptable risk is where you weigh out the pros and cons and decide that the benefits outweigh the risks that are involved. We do this on a daily basis in all the activities we do, such as riding a bike, driving in a vehicle, or even crossing the road. And all chemicals or drugs that we use today have some sort of toxicity, so it is our job to evaluate whether or not the benefits of that outweigh the risks that are involved. And that brings this crash course to an end. Thanks for listening.